Um, I don't think we're going to do a quiz Friday. I was thinking about doing that, but maybe not. Anyways, uh, last two days we were doing 5.0, number 1 through 14. You want to make sure you do that. Uh, do you all see these two things? I talked about it yesterday. Uh, the gr grades this week will go into the grade book, but after that, next week's grades will roll into the fourth nine weeks. And all grades will be due by next Friday. So whatever your grade is after this Friday, it'll be a frozen floor, meaning it can't go down, but you do have a week to bring it up. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So, hey. So, factor the trinomial. Was anyone not here the last two days? Okay. So y'all should know how to do, well, so let me show you how to do this. Okay. You need to know how to do this to do today's notes. So this is called factoring a trinomial. So what you do is you take this last number and you write all the factors. What what numbers multiply to make 100? Start with the start at the bottom. 1 times 100. And then yeah, change the signs. So even a negative 1 times a negative 100 will give you a positive 100. Uh, what about 2? 2 times 50 and give me the give me the negatives. Negative 2, negative 50. What about 3? No, what about 4? Four? 4 times 25, negative 4, negative 25. What about 5? 20, negative 5 times negative 20, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 10, negative 10, negative 10, and that's about it. Okay? So if you weren't here yesterday or the day before, you got to find your factor pairs of this number, and then you want to see which one of these pairs adds up to make the middle term negative 29. So which one do y'all think it is? Negative 4, negative 25 will add to make this and multiply to make this. Right? So... So here's what we do. We put it into two parentheses with x's. Negative 4, negative 25. Whoa. And that's it. So that's how you do factoring. You're going to use that today when we do these notes. So I'm going to pass out 8.2. All right, so today we're going to do multiplying and dividing rationals. Everyone looking up here? No headphones, no phones, please, because I want y'all to understand this. Okay, so the first question is how do you multiply fractions? Here's your first example. What do y'all think we would do to multiply these fractions? So... Okay, so cross multiplying and butterfly is only when there's an equal sign between them. So when you're just multiplying fractions, it's top times top, bottom times bottom. Okay, so uh, you can leave it at a fraction. So 3 times 10 and 5 times 9. So 3 times 10 gives you 30, and 5 times 9 gives you 45. Okay, so that's pretty, not too hard, right? You just multiply and multiply, right? But then you want to reduce the fraction. Okay. Now, I believe if you just type it in your calculator, it will reduce it for you if it's just numbers. Um, but hopefully you know that 30 and 45 can be divided by nine, uh, 3. Sorry. And if you reduce it by 3... Sorry. The, actually, the greatest common factor is 15. 15 goes into 30. 15 goes into 45. So if you divide them both by 15, you'll get two-thirds, okay? That's it for a simple one like that. So as you can see, it's about to get a lot more uh, interesting, right? So that's a straightforward. That's how you uh, do multiplying fractions. So let's try example two. Does everyone have this example? 
So they have a common factor of 15, so it cancels out on the top and the bottom. Ba basically, 30 and 45 can both be divided by 15. So you divide them both by 15, you get 2 over 3. Okay. Let me do attendance. All right, ready? Example two. Here we go. Now, multiplying fractions. Okay, this is another way to do it, but we're not going to do that. Okay, example two. How do you multiply a rational expression? Okay, now this is still two fractions, so you are just multiplying the top, multiplying the bottom. So 5x squared times 6 on the top. Okay. Let's see here. How are they writing this out? Hmm. Okay, so look at, look at the way they're doing it. They are expanding the x's. Now, you're not going to do this every time, but we're kind of showing you how it works here. If you have 2x's on top, 3x's on the bottom, okay, and you have 6 broken into, expanded into 2 times 3, you can scratch out everything on top and bottom that is a common factor that, that's going to cancel out. So, you see how there's only a five on top, no five on bottom. Leave the five there. I got. Why do you, what? Why do you break it out for two times three? You want all the prime factors because we're going to we're going to cancel out all the prime factors. Here's why. Okay, simplifying this. Now that you see that six is two times three, you see there's a two on top, there's a two on the bottom. Those cancel out. They're gone. And the x's have two x's in common. Those cancel out. So you're left with 5 times 3 on top and an x on the bottom. So 5 times 3 is 15 on top. x is on the bottom. Now, I don't always expand it like that. And you really can't when you have like x to the 20th or something. You wouldn't want to write 20 x's. It gets really tedious. Okay, But we're just showing you how it's working. If you expand these out to factors, you're canceling stuff out. Yes? Right. So I would say no. I would think if you see 6 on top and 2 on the bottom, you know, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. Cool. See, here's how I would have done this. 5. Can I write on this? Hmm. Why can I not write on this? Hello? For real. Hey. That's great. There we go. All right. Try this again. Enable editing. I need to go to the next slide. Why is this not working? Okay. Okay, here's how I would have done this. Okay, 5 times 6 on top is what? 30. 2 is on the bottom. x squared is on the top. x to the third is on the bottom. What's 30 divided by 2? 15. If you have 2 on top and 3 on the bottom, okay, the bigger number's on the bottom, so 3 minus 2 
gives you one on the bottom. Okay. okay. I know. But but the notes are trying to explain the very nitty gritty why, and it's it's because you're you're eliminating factors, okay? Which matters because when we get to the trinomials, you're gonna eliminate factors. Yeah, yeah. Five times six is thirty. Thirty divided by the two gave us the fifteen. When you divide and you get a, a a normal number, it goes on top. Okay. Okay. So that's that is how I would do it, and we're just gonna proceed. Right. When you, if you're multiplying, add the powers. If you're dividing, subtract the powers. Just remember, whichever side has the bigger power, that's where you're gonna put the answer. Um, just moving on past this one. Here's example three. Now look, this is where it gets a little tricky. Is everyone looking up here? Hey. Okay. So we need to factor things. So this first uh, numerator on top, 2x plus 6. Can you factor 2x plus 6? What goes into 2x and 6? 2, right? So you're going to write two parentheses, and when you divide both of these by two, you get just x and three. Do you see how that's like backwards distribution? You're saying what goes into two x and six? Two, divide this by two, write it there, divide this by two, write it there. Oh, two. Okay, are y'all able to factor a number like that? Okay, we're we have another example down here at the bottom. Okay, so let's keep going. Five stays on the bottom, x stays on the top. Right here, we need to factor this. What does x squared and three x have in common? One of the x's. Okay, so you're gonna pull out an x and write the parentheses. And what's left over when you take away one x from each of these terms, x squared when you factor out an x is left with one x. 3x, when you factor out the x, you just have the 3. What do you mean? Oh, I'm sorry. This is 3x, not x to the third power. So this, this is really just 1x, x to the 1 power, right? So if when you take away 1x from here, you have one left. And you take away one x from here. That's all there is. This three is a coefficient, not a degree. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, after doing all that, now what you want to do is see what you can cancel out over here, right? So what is the same on top and bottom that you can scratch out? So the x plus three parentheses actually can be crossed out on both top and bottom. Okay. What else is on top and bottom? There's an x and an x that can be crossed out on the top and bottom. So what are we left with? 2 and 5, so 2 over 5. That's it. You've got to be able to factor, okay? You've got to be able to factor and then cancel some stuff out. Okay? All right. Now... Example four, whoops. Okay, we're going to skip number four. Let's go to... So, remember, to multiply rational expressions, you multiply the... Let's see if it actually tells us. Oh, yeah, my bad. So, first step is to factor, if you can. Simplify or reduce, 
multiply the numerators and denominators, and that's it. So write these down, and then we're going to flip it to the back side. Give me a foot. Oh, what? Sorry. Hand it out. Oh, sorry. Just no, just today. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, let's flip it to the back side to talk about dividing. Okay, now, this, if you can understand multiplying, dividing just has one extra step, okay? So, have y'all heard of the word reciprocal? It says it right here. What is a reciprocal of a fraction? What do you do to the fraction? You flip it upside down, okay? So, for example... What's the reciprocal of 10 over 18? 18 over 10, okay? So here's the deal. When you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So everybody write this down on the back side, number one. When you see dividing by a fraction, what you're really going to do is turn it into a multiplying, and then you flip it over, okay? The first one stays the same. 2 over 3, the original one, but the second one, you got to flip and turn it into multiplying. Okay? Now this one, could you solve that? 2, two over 3 times 18 over 10. Well, I would do 2 times 18 on top, get 36, 3 times 10 on the bottom, 30, and then reduce it. And remember, if you just have numbers, you can type it in your calculator, it'll reduce it for you. Okay? Now, they're going to show us by, like, breaking it down into factors, but remember, if you type it in, it'll just give it to you. Okay, calculator can help a lot. So 6 over 5. Let's do a look at example 6. All right, is this multiplying or dividing? Dividing, so that means I need to turn this second fraction upside down, turn it into multiplying. So really, 5x squared over 7 stays the same, but now this dividing becomes multiplying. Flip that frac, okay? Now, I'll, I'll tell you what I would do here. I do 5 times 14 on top. Divided by 7, reduce to fraction, that'll be your coefficients. Okay. And then, now look at this. We have x squared on top, x to the eighth on the bottom. What do we do when we're dividing? What do we do with those powers? We're going to subtract them, biggest minus smallest. So the bigger number's on the bottom, so you better put your answer on the bottom. Okay. So 8 minus 2 is 6, but don't put it on top. you got to put it on the bottom where the bigger number is. Okay? You get this? So, check it out. This is how they like to write it. Again, I would just do all the multiplying all at once and reducing. Okay? 
in. Write this down if you want, but again, if you do 5 times 14 divided by 7, you're going to get 10. Okay? For sure. And then if you do x squared over x to the 8th, Yeah, so you're, you're, I would first think, just take all the regular number coefficients, 5 times 14 over 7. That would give me 70 over 7, which gives me 10 on top. Then I would think of my x's, 8 minus 2 gives me 6, but is it going to go on top or bottom? Well, it's going to go to the bottom because the bigger number's on the bottom, so x to the 6th. There's, other, there's multiple ways to do this, uh, however you like to do it. But the notes are showing us by expanding it into stuff that, again. I mean, you can see that, okay, they basically did what I did. They rearranged it. They put all the numbers together here. They put the x's together here. They reduced this to get 10. They reduced this to get x to the 6 on the bottom. Okay. All right. Example 7. Two more examples, and we're good. Right. So again, dividing means we're going to flip the fraction and we're going to multiply instead. So you're going to get times 2x minus 8 on top, x to the fifth goes to the bottom. Okay. I want you to notice 2x minus 8, if you factor out the 2, you get 2 parentheses x minus 4. Okay, so 2x minus 8, you pull out a 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, you get 2 on the outside, and when you divide each term by 2, you get x minus 4 on the inside. So hopefully now you see there's some stuff you can cross out. What is on top and bottom that can cancel out? x minus 4 and x minus 4. Okay. Well, now, now let's think about what's left over. Nothing else cancels out, like, perfectly. So what are my regular number coefficients? I see that 2 is there, so that's going to bring over the 2. And then the x squared and the x to the fifth, you're going to do 5 minus 2. And it's going to go to the bottom because the bigger number is on the bottom. So x to the third power is how you get, is what you get on the bottom. And I want to make sure everyone's understanding. Are you all seeing this? Hey, look up. Now, 5 on the bottom, 2 on the top, 5 minus 2 is 3. We're done with on the side of the bigger number. 5 is on the bottom. Okay. Uh, last but not least, example 8. Once again, we're dividing, so we need to flip that fraction. Flip it over. Make it multiplication. Now, do y'all remember our warm-up when we did the last two days? Do you see this right here? Y'all remember our warm-up? How do we factor this thing? I want to think, what are the factors of 12 that I can make negative 1? Now, maybe we can do this mentally, but what multiplies to make negative 12 that's going to give me negative 1 when I add it together? Negative 4 and positive 3. Okay, so negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Okay, so I want you to see how they get this answer right here. Does everyone see how we get from here to here using you know, found our factors? You know what I'm saying? Like the warm-up. Okay. Now, on the bottom, can we factor this? What do these have in common? X. So pull out an X from here. Pull out an X from here. You get X parentheses. X plus 3. Okay. 
please remember the next fraction is going to be flipped. So x goes on top. And on the bottom, can you factor 2x minus 8? What does the 2 and the minus 8 have in common? 2, right? So divide 2x by 2, divide negative 8 by 2, and you get 2 parentheses x minus 4. I've been time teachers, please take your second period and tell me I would times so please take your of the student every period. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now can we cross some stuff out here? So what uh, what cancels out on the top and the bottom? X minus 4, I heard X plus 3, X, what's left? A 2 on the bottom. Now if there's nothing left on top, what do I put on top? Is it 0 or 1? So it is 1, okay? Um, like when you're dividing stuff, they divide out, but one is left over, okay? So you have one over two uh, as your fraction that's left. Cool? Now all we got to do is write the how to divide fractions part of our notes, and then I'm going to hand you 8.2, and you'll have some time to work on that today and tomorrow. So here's your steps. Whoops. Write that down first. Okay. So get these steps written down. Don't forget, dividing, you must multiply by the flipped reciprocal. Okay? I'm going to pass out 8.2, and we will get started. Some of us need to do corrections still. Here we go. Okay, y'all can do numbers 1 through 7, and then 9, 10, and then 12. All right? Please remember on the back, you're dividing. You have to flip the second fraction. Okay, so you don't have to do number 8, you don't have to do number 11. Um, and then obviously you don't have to do 13 through 16. Cool, here we go. 